take mine to the stadium. They can all you can hear this air. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're gonna take it back to the parking lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You want to go to the mall? No problem. Okay. Right, hit this air right here. Right. That's all right. <laughs> good morning, Charlie. How you doing? Hey, good morning. What's up with y'all? Nothing less. You working out? <laughs> yeah, I'm on a treadmill. <laughs> I'm proud of you. You look good. You losing weight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Go, brother Charlie. <laughs> workout. I'm so discombobulated not being able to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. Like this is super I, bothering me. I was telling Ashley yesterday, Janelle, that I I tried that lit powder you you were talking about. <laughs> Man, let's, I don't know if it does you this way, but it it literally lights my whole body on fire. <laughs> <laughs> You be up though, the don't truth. You? Okay, for real and focus. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell the way you said it, darling. You whispered it. You were like that lip powder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let me just say this: since I got you, got you drinking it now, I don't know for sure, but I guess because I've taken pre workout so long and so much, mm-hmm. my heart is bothering me. Mm. I can't promise you that's what it is because it just started doing this. And okay. So re- when it says take it um, 30 days on and 30 days off, trust it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that stuff is the truth for real. Let me, I said it's my crack, baby. If you Man. want to stop, go ahead and swallow some of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have no choice but to wake up. Are you going to be sweating and shaking in your sleep? Okay, for real. <laughs> <laughs> I admire people who can just get up and go to the gym with nothing. Like, I, I admire them, but I may have to become one of those if we can't figure out what the problem is. Okay, guys, it is 8.30. We're going to go ahead and get started today. Does anyone have anything they want to cover before we uh, get started today? Good morning, well, Kelly. give some announcements. Go ahead. Give me, give me, I would like to thank everyone who was able to come out and serve at Kids Mills, Inc. It definitely brought joy to my heart to see so many people jumping in. And I know that um, Janelle and I share the same heart of helping the children. And so to see that it also reached so many agents and y'all were able to give back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then of course, um, today we have a really big day ahead. We'll be doing our Smile and Dial um, coming up at 9.30 till 11. And then we go right into a lunch and learn. So I really hope that y'all can make it. Um, Mr. Brian Arsenal will come in and expose us to some lender products. And then just following, we'll finish up our much needed contracts to boot camp. So I am super stoked. Um, we are still doing our smile and dial in the afternoons on Wednesday and Thursday also. So from four to six, if you can't make it to the morning session, just know that that is something that's available. And then um, everyone should be all ready to have saved the date for May 26th, Thursday afternoon. That's our relaunch. And we are not only inviting you, we are inviting you to bring other people like you into the room. So you'll receive a punch bowl about that and some more information about it today. And then that's all I got. All right. Awesome stuff. So um, I know a real estate, a lot of real estate agents are super excited and really want to know what, if, the, uh, should I go to a team? Um, should I not go to a team? Should I start a team or should I uh, go on a team? Like these are a lot of questions that agents ask. Usually new agents usually ask me, you know, is it a good idea for me to go on a real estate team or should I try this thing myself? So the objective of today is for you to be able to make a sound decision at the end of this conversation. Am I ready? Do I have what I need 
is it a good decision for me to go on a team or is it a good decision for me to start a team? So um, before I dive into a bunch of facts and figures and knowledge, does anyone have any questions, concerns, or anything they want to talk about or questions specifically you want me to cover relating to a team? Okay, awesome. When you're on, I'm sorry, I'm using it. Oh, go ahead. Okay, go ahead, uh, Charlie first, and then uh, Tier. Um, just structure, you know, um, who to hire, when to hire, stuff like that. Okay, awesome. That is part of the process. So, um, what were you saying, Tara? Um, one of my questions was going to be like, when you hire a team or you join a team, and you're all just say that you're all new. How do you go about? Um, you will still individually pay the the fee, the fees, and how would you split? Like, if you all are kind of still in training together, and you start to get uh, clients, and of course they're ones and twos, but how do you go about splitting it amongst each other? You know, so that everybody can eat, and it's not just you know one person getting um, the commission or whatever you want to call it. Okay, those are all good questions. Does anyone else have anything that they want me to cover? Questions they want me to answer or uh, go over before we get over into the actual team prospect uh, process? Ms. Janelle, you normally cover <laughs> every question anybody can have, but <laughs> <laughs> with great detail. So thank you. <laughs> No problem. I definitely will uh, try my best to make sure this makes sense to everyone, right? Um, because this is a topic as a real estate agent that you guys should be excited about, right? Um, either you are thinking about joining a team, you're thinking about starting a team, or you actually own a team, and you're just trying to make sure you have the right structure. This is a, should be exciting for you to make sure you're on the right path. And so... Um, let me just give you, so every real estate office has a structure. Every real estate company has a structure of how they want you to uh, monitor your team. And to be real honest, it's really for the broker's uh, responsibility, uh, for the broker's uh, making sure that they are on task. Because when you have someone else operating on your license, that is a really, really uh, dangerous thing because you're depending on someone else's knowledge to not get you in trouble or lose your uh, license, right? And so the bigger the team, the bigger the responsibility. Um, every team owner should be a listing agent. Um, if you go and ask any broker, you ask any real estate coach, a team owner should have a a uh, at least a minimum of 30 listings in order to really have a successful team. Now, there are three uh, types of major team structures. There's a lot of team structures out there, but the three team structures that are pretty much used the most is going to be your mentee, mentor model, and then you have your team leader model, and then you have your lead team model. Now, a lot of franchise brokerages usually do the lead team model. And so what that means is, is that the rainmaker, which is always the team owner. So if you ever hear that word, you hear, you know that that person owns a team and they call them the rainmaker because they're supposed to supply all of the leads for the people on the team. So basically they're making it rain, right? So the most popular model is going to be the lead team model. And with the lead team model, we usually have three to 10 members. Um, the commission split is usually anywhere 70, 30, 60, 40. Now the team member usually does about 12 to 36 transactions a year. Now think about this. I didn't say the rainmaker, I said the team member. So that could be anywhere from your listing agents to your listing, uh, to your buyer's agents. Those people are doing 12 to 36 deals a year. And the turnover rate for that is usually uh, medium. Um, the income and the retention is usually uh, medium to high. And a person usually will stay on your team two to five years. So the, re the way that you become, you run a lead team model is that you have a bunch of leads that you have purchased or you have coming in to your system, right? And so um, you have, operations your your team is uh separated in two different systems so you have your operations and then you have sales 
on the sales side, you have two types of sales. You have inside sales and then you have outside sales. So that's how that team is structured. They have, they're divided with the sales side. So that's the people who are actually going out and doing the sales. So it's going to be listing agents and buyers agents. It's going to be listing coordinators. And then you have the operation side. So the operation side is going to have your transaction coordinators, your listing coordinators. It's going to have your inside sales and it's going to have your outside sales and it's going to have your transaction um, process. Now, what does that mean? Right. So you have you have hired someone based on a system that you are paying for in order to generate these leads. So most people who have the lead, <clears throat> excuse me, the lead team model is paying anywhere between a thousand to twenty thousand dollars a month in their advertising budget. They have systems like Zillow, Google, Zerple, Boomtown. Uh, let me think of some other ones. They have uh, Wilopo. They have KB Core. They have Red X. They have Mojo. They have Vulcan Seven. They have Land Voice. They have Offers. These are all systems that you can use to generate leads. And most people who own the lead team, team version of it owns all of those systems and they're getting at least 300 leads a month. So if you want to run this model and you want to collect a majority of the commission, the agents that work on this team model usually collects 30 to 40 percent in commission. Now, why do you think they only get 30 to 40 percent of the sale? Because they're probably not paying for the advertising or the marketing, which is very costly. Very good. They don't pay for anything. They come on this team and they work, right? But the the rainmaker has to be able to supply an amount of leads because the, remember, each one of these members are selling anywhere between twelve to thirty six deals a year. So also, let's look at it from not just from the team leader's perspective, but let's look at it from the agent perspective. So joining a team that is lead team, that's on a lead team model means that you're working eight hours a day. It's just like working a job. They depend on you to make work eight hours a day, five days a week, and they, they depend on you to convert at least three, uh, two to three leads a week which means you have to convert those leads over and they fire fast. Did everyone kind of understand that model? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, then they have the, uh, the, uh, the team lead model, right? So that's a different um, model. Now with the team lead model, the splits is usually 50, 50 or 60, 40. Most of the leads that come from a team leader model is from listings and their database. So basically the agents are making the sales out of the database of the Rainmaker because they have a huge database or they're making them from the listings that the team hold. So the team holds anywhere between 30 to 50 listings constantly on a monthly basis and the percentages are split 50, 50 or 60, 40. Now, the benefits of, of an agent being on this team is they're going to have uh, recognition, right? So I'll give you an example of the uh, team leader model. A lot of Keller Williams agents, a lot of EXP agents, and a lot of Remax agents run this model. So in order to be a team leader and run this model in a franchise, in EXP, you have to have done $6 million in sales and hold at least 25 listings. If you want to be an icon team, you have to have run at least 10 million in sales and you have to have at least 30 to 50 listings. Now these people have a high advertising budget, but most of their work is done in a farm area and most of their uh, lead generating is done on the phones. So they do a lot of cold calling and database calling. And then the last model is the mentor mentee, which is what I run, right? So I help you guys in the office. It's usually a, uh, it could be zero to two people on a team. It could really go, it could actually go up to five because every coach can handle a hundred agents. So after a hundred agents, then you're going to have to elect some help, right? 
you usually do about three year, three to six deals, and the uh, retention is really uh, high, right? Because it's usually just one to two people that's actually working it. But that's just that that does not provide any leads. That's just helping the person to get the leads and giving them information on how to generate their own leads. So there's usually these three models that each team is ran on, right? So how do you know if you are structured correctly and who's your first hire, right? So usually team, like I told you, the, the most common team is the team leader model. Uh, and then you have the a lead team model. So in the lead team model, I told you that it's separated in two different models, right? You have the sales and the marketing side, and then you have the administrative and the process side. So if I was running this model, what do you think my first hire should be? I think it should be a training person. <clears throat> so it's seven levels to that model, right? You got you got to go seven layer levels deep. We always like to dig layers deep, right? So the first level is you. You as the rainmaker, if you want to start this team, you as the rainmaker need to be doing at least six million in sales, which is about 30 to 50 transactions a year. So until you get to that point, you don't need any help. You just need a transaction coordinator, right? Now, when you get to level two, now that I have done about 50, 45 to 50 transactions on a consistent basis for a year, it's time for me to get my first level, second, uh, my second level higher, and that's going to be an assistant. So now it's just me on the sales side and the marketing side and the administrative side is going to be an assistant. Once I begin to get to the next level, I have raised my business 25 to 30 percent. I get to the third level and now my next hire is going to be marketing and a transaction coordinator. So now my team consists of three people, me, the marketing person and the transaction coordinator and the assistant. So that's four. Right. Then when I get to a point where I have increased my business some more. This is the fourth level of my business. I am going to buy, I'm going to hire a, a, a buyer's agent and now I have a buyer's agent, a marketing assistant, a, a, a office assistant, and a transaction coordinator. When I get to the fifth level, that's when I start hiring listing assistants. And as it goes on and on, when you get to the seventh level, you are no longer operating in your business. You're operating on your business there's a difference that means you are not actually doing any work you are actually the ceo of the business and you have a listing specialist a lead listing specialist you have a buyer's agent a lead buyer agent a marketing specialist you have a telemarketer you have an isa you have a listing manager you have a transaction coordinator and you have a lead coordinator that's how you professionally and proficiently run a team now, I said a whole lot. Who has some questions? Now is the time. I don't what? have any questions. I think that the that formatting is good, like what you said. What percent is the CEO getting? The percent, the seven, okay, on the lead. On the lead team model, the CEO is getting 70%. They get anywhere between 60 to 70%. It depends on how much money they're putting into their marketing budget. So I'm glad that you made you um, you asked that question. So as the as in that model, which is the most common model, so the most common model is the lead team model, but the um, the most used by franchises is the team leader model, right? So the difference between those models and the lead team model, which means that the lead, the, the team is ran by the leads that they purchase. So if your team, your rainmaker is purchasing a bunch of leads, then you know that's the lead team model. That model, the team, the person who owns the team is making 70, 60 to 40, 60 to 70 percent of the commission. And the reason why they make more money than you it's because they're going to supply you with a lot of leads. So you're going to close a lot of deals, but they, are ha they have a really high marketing budget. 
their marketing budget is almost $20,000. So Matthew Guzman spends $10,000 a month on Zillow leads alone. But everybody on his team closes anywhere to between 20 and 30 deals a year. And his team is huge, right? He had he keeps a a, a bank of at least 50 listings in the city at all times. Because he uses Vulcan 7 and, and Zillow. There's no secrets to this sauce, guys. There it's out there. You just gotta be able to do it. Now on the on the leader on the leader team model, which means that they're highly living on their database and their listings. The, I'll give you an example. That's Christy Newcomb, right? Christy Newcomb carries about she does at least 100 to 150 deals a year. Uh, Fairfield in Cyprus is her is her form area, and she carries at least 30 listings, right? Her model is going to be 70 30 on the listing side, 50 50 on the buyer side. But she covers the MLS, she covers the log boxes, she covers the team marketing, she covers all of that stuff. So that's the reason why the split is that way. What if your What if your team? What if they bring in? What if they get their own leads? Is it still a, a, the same split? Yep, that's that's so. That's the beauty of being a rainmaker, right? Mm -hmm. You're also supposed to have your team bringing in a certain amount of deals a year, but the split is still the same because in mm -hmm. order for you to bring those deals in, you still have to use my marketing. Mm -hmm. You still have to use my tools. Mm -hmm. And the team does never get to advertise themselves. It's always the rainmaker who is being advertised. Mm. So if my team, if I had the, oh, so I got Compton and Company, right? Compton and Company is the, Janelle's the face of Compton, Compton and Company. So whether Shannon goes out and get a lead or not, it still goes under Compton and Company. It's still the logo in the face of the business. So you get to decide, do you advertise your face? Or do you advertise your logo? You'll see like the icon team. You'll see the uh, kink team. You will see the Lance Logan team. A lot of them choose to advertise people. And then some of them, you only see a logo. Some of you never know what these people look like because they don't advertise it. Once your team, the Flory team, once your team gets as big as 10 to 15 people, you can't put everybody on a sign. So it's either just you. Uh, like my uh, one of my clients, old clients, uh, Noel, you see her face on all of it, uh, but she has a team of six. So when you work on a team, you don't get to, um, your face doesn't go on it. So even if you brought a lead in, it's still a lead coming into the system, right? So you have to think about that. So I want to tell you the agent side of it as being on a team. And I want to tell you the team lead side of it as owning a team because you need to know more. So uh, Cheryl, are you there? Can you talk? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So Cheryl, did I hit it on the nose? You just left. Yes. You... Uh, I left the team. Like this, nothing uh, was, uh, nothing was advertised. Um, in my name, it's all under the team. Even when you get a transaction, it goes in the name of the team and not you. And the rainmaker gets the dollar volume. Yes. So your team was a uh, team leader model. So she was heavy in listings, right? Yes. And, and how, many, how many deals did she close last year? Uh, 160. And how many leads were you responsible for? Um, out of those 160, I, well, I was, I, when I was on the team before I left, I was in charge of getting the listings. So, um, of those 160, I think I did about 40, 35 to 40. Yeah. And of course, some of those listing people will become buyers as well. So. But let, let me, I, got, I have a question. Uh, Cheryl, put yours on pause so I can hear Andre. There you go. Go ahead, Andre. So, so my, my question is, so Cheryl went and brought in 40 listings herself. Is that, is, that, is that what I'm hearing? Yes, to a team. That's what, the, that's what yes. a true team runs that way. 
And so since Cheryl has come to our office, Cheryl's been kicking butt. Cheryl has just took two listings for herself. She, let me tell you who smiles and dials every day without hesitation. She's in her car on her way to the office right now. I know she is. She sits in that office every day. She gets there before anybody else. She opens those doors and she make calls every single day. Because to be on the team that she was on, she had to get two listings every week. She had to get two appointments every week. If she didn't, she was kicked off. One of the characteristics of a team leader is they fire fast. If you cannot produce, I'm going to fire you. I do not hold on to you hoping that you're going to figure it out. If you can't make these phone calls, if you can't get these listing appointments, you are gone. Am I right, Cheryl? Correct. That's correct. <laughs> And there's no, there's no forgiveness. There is no leeway. You either got to be on it or not. You got to understand that you got to do this. And you're doing this for all day long. Like, you don't, you have to ask for vacation. Now, that's how a true team is ran. They're hiring people to build the brand. So the, the whole objective of the team is to scale. And what's your number one scaling system that you guys have? And every last one of you have one. Whether you are with our office or not, you have a this scaling system, and it's the number one scaling system of every rainmaker out there. Come on, guys. Somebody got to know. People, people. No, your number one scaling system is your CRM. A CRM is the only part of your business that can be sold. You can build a strong CRM big enough to sell it because every team leader has a minimum of 5,000 people in their database. So the difference between the lead team model and the team leader model is the team leader model, their lead generation is out of the database of the, of the Rainmaker and the farm area. So in God's hands, that is at KW, they did 20 million last year, right? Strictly out of the team leader's database. Was that Vache? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. I wanted to be on her team, but she... She, I guess, had too much going on because she's in Texas and Louisiana. Yeah, to my knowledge, mm -hmm. and she just referred me to you know, uh, the regular people. I actually tried to be on <laughs> two teams, <laughs> I tried to be on two teams. First one was hers, and then the second one was another lady from Remax. And, um, yeah, I chose, I would say, the hard route. <laughs> And Ms. Chanel, don't tear me apart, but I'm glad I'm choosing it to get it out the mud myself because I felt like, you know, they do take a large percentage, like 50-50 leases, that's a lot. But as a new agent, I would be getting so much knowledge and exposure. Of, yeah. So that's, that's okay, so I was going to go into that, but I was going to cover the rest of this commission part, right? But I'm glad you brought that up, Passion. So let, think about this, Passion. So you wanted to be on her team. And let me tell you, uh, you know, and you can verify what I'm saying, but Shay is probably hardly in the office. She does not work real estate. She owns a full team. She did 20 million without touching a real estate deal. Cause what does she do full time? Like marketing and yeah, traveling. No, she coach. She's a oh, bowl coach. coach. Oh, yes. She's a bowl coach, too. Yeah. She's a 100% a bowl coach. She's never in Texas. She's always somewhere else coaching around the world. And she runs two teams across Louisiana and New Orleans, and she has a team here in Houston. Now, how does she do that? She has an agent. I want you to look her up. Her name is Shamara. Shamara closes 70% of Vache's deals. Shamara Carroll has a closing, at least a closing every other day. And all of 100% uh, of Shamara's clients is Shamara's clients. These are people she went to school with. These are people who knew that she did real estate. And she has a pretty decent uh, database of her own. But she's still on the team. And she is uh, carrying that team, most likely. 
but you do not see Vache selling any real estate because she's the she follows the leader team model. But Miss Miss Janelle, mm -hmm. when you doing numbers like that and you have clients like that, does it normally take like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years <laughs> to yes, be at that level? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And so that's the that's the other thing is a lot of people come out the gate and they want to start a team. This conversation is to help you know when you're ready, if you're ready, and when you should or when you should not, and what it takes to actually maintain it, right? These are people who are kicking butt. Uh, Christy Newcomb, her team is probably, it's only three, her assistant, her husband, and one more so she has four people she closes four she closes 150 on average never seen in her office but she is a, a farmer so she's getting all of this money from farming in uh cyprus so she has bridgeland and she has fairfield and if you live in cyprus you know how big bridgeland is she has that old money but I'm trying to see where there's no, in my opinion, because I drove around yesterday because I live in Cyprus and I drove around Brisbane and Fairfield. I don't see no foreman. So it must be, I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't know. <laughs> Not that I want to do it, but I just hear people say that and I drive around. I don't see no foreman, but I don't know. So what I mean by foreman is she makes phone calls and she holds all her listings in those two areas. She is part of the uh, board. She's on the HOA. She's in every committee, all of that. Tanya Jeggy is the same way. Tanya Jeggy does about 15 to 20 million a year. And she does, I think she did 25 this year. And she's on the city council. I mean, not city council, it's on the school council board. She is, uh, her kids go to private school. So she's on the booster team. Uh, she's also on a booster team of two mil uh, middle schools and a high school over there in Cyprus. I'm not sure what her neighborhood is. But these, when I mean farming, you won't see it with your eyes, but you go and look in the computer and look at their numbers, that is right there. That means that they're holding most of the listings. So when you drive through the neighborhood and listen, looking at the signs, you're going to see Krista Newcomb. If you ride through Fairfield, you're going to see her car and her uh, SUV with her name on it and her husband's uh, car in that neighborhood every single day now the flory team and the uh lance loken team lance loken has 60 people on his team flory has 40. now their model is listings but they are them off the part a part of their model is new home sales so they build relationships with new home builders so you will probably go to a builder and say hey how can i get your listings and you will see that they're listing they say we already have an agent that's because that agent is collecting no money from the listing they list it for free so what's the benefit of listing that property for free the clientele the, the new because process. they're going to get the yeah. buyers exposure they're going to get the buyers so it's volume Real estate is about numbers, y'all. It's volume. So they're going to have a bunch of listings. And when they put them on the MLS, buyers are going to come in. And, and out of those buyers, they probably won't even get a lot of the buyers. But out of those buyers, 10% of them are going to have a, a house to sell in order to be able to buy. And that's what they promised them. So every team is based on listings. Even the, the, the model of the lead team model where they're buying a lot of leads they're buying these leads for listings that team that cheryl worked on those were listings those were not buyers you're going to get buyers but every rainmaker has a 70 30 business 70 percent of their uh business is listings and 30 percent of their business is buyers yeah our team lead didn't work with any buyers unless they were like a million and up um, so, uh, but she did have buyers agents on the team from her Zillow leads. Mm -hmm. There you go. So she definitely runs the lead team model. And this is something you guys need to study before you decide to run a team. Now, on the flip side, if you're a real estate agent and you're considering getting on a team, this is also something you need to consider. Now, why do you need to consider this? Can the lead, can the team fund you? Can the team grow you? 
And can the team keep you? Those are the things you need to ask in your mind. So who wants to role play with me? And I'm going to be the team person. You're going to answer my questions. I'm going to show you what questions you should ask a rainmaker and to decide which team you're going to go on if you decide to go on a team. Who wants to role play? Don't everybody volunteer at once. I'll pick somebody. I'll do it. Okay. Very good. All right. So I'm going to be calling you and you own a team, right? You know half of these teams that I'm talking about because you came from that office, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's you're great, right? So don't be scared. But this is a conversation that you should have when you're deciding that you're going to join a team. All right. So just say ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hey, Passion. This is Janelle. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm a new agent and I just got my real estate license and I'm really not sure if I want to do this on my own. Or I want to join a team. But what I do know is that I need to get into production really, really fast so that I don't have to go get a job. And so I was wondering, are you looking for people on your team? Well, first of all, let me tell you, congratulations. It is not easy getting your license. Um, I remember many, many years ago uh, I was in your shoes. Um, yes. Being a new agent, you should definitely join a team. Uh, we offer you leads. We offer you marketing, paperwork, everything that entails with dealing with the client in a transaction. We offer you. We have a ton of CRMs for you, and um, we'll be really great for you. Okay, so um, how many sales do you do every year? Every year, we do about... 100 million in volume um and that equals to about 300 transactions a year and how many people are currently on your team now there's currently 20 people on my team um and so what if you're looking for a buyer's agent use what's typically the number of closings that i will have every year um you will have anywhere from 40 to 50 but let me ask you a question why do you want to work on the buy side um buy well i just i thought that's where i would go first because what i heard was people usually close buyers before they close listings so um do you have a position in the buy side um actually how i built my business is off of listings um when you list you last that's our motto on the Passion Lewis team. And um, I strongly suggest everybody become a listing agent. Now, you can be a buyer's agent. That's wonderful. But when you list, you last. Okay. So uh, I, I was, I've been interviewing a lot of teams, and I talked to um, the Flory team, and they told me that I have to start on the listing side. Um, the first p position on the team is to start making phone calls. Is it like that on your team? Yes. That's our bread and our butter. Um, cold calling. Um, a lot of people don't like to do it, but you can get a client and close in the next 30 days. Using this method, um, I will teach you everything you need to know. So how worry. many phone calls do I have to make? On average... 100 to 150 um we like to start in the morning time and if you don't finish in the morning you can finish in the afternoon you have to get the phone calls out there because that's how we generate new clients and business okay so do i have to be at the office all the time what is how much time is, is required of me um we require your 100 110 percent dedication um, our motto here at the Passion Lewis team is um, work hard, play hard, um, scare money, don't make money. <laughs> um, you know, you really have to give it your 110 percent dedication, everything. OK, so if I wanted to go on vacation with my husband, um, how does that process work? You would need somebody to cover your 150 calls a day. I suggest arranging something with them. Um, you can bring your phone with you, you know, working from home is not, you know, I understand you on vacation, but on being on my team, I require a certain level of dedication and expectancy from you. The best thing to do is 
make a BFF on the team, and that way they can cover your calls. You can maybe slide things and change, but these calls have to get made. Okay, awesome. Now, I know you say you provide me with all the marketing and all of the scripts and everything that I'm going to need. How am I compensated? You have to sign a contract. Um, I will give you the contract on our second interview, um, but pretty much as a team rainmaker, I have to pay for my systems. They're really expensive. I have to pay my brokerage because I have a different level of fees. It's more expensive for me. So I take part of your commission. I'm offering you all the leads. I'm giving you everything you need to be successful. Um, it takes agents years to get to this level and the amount of exposure that I'm about to give you, it's worth your while. Do you pay my MLS fees? I do. MLS, lockbox, signs, um, open house material. I cover everything. But now, we don't need to sign a contract with me. And I do expect a long-term commitment from everybody that joins my team of a minimum five years. Okay. Well, that's a long time. Okay, I have another question. So when I when you take the higher split on the commission on my side, do I still have to split it with the office? Um, no, you will not have to split it with the office. I well, you do have to pay your two hundred and fifty dollars a month for Remax, um, but I will cover most of your fees. But you do have to pay two hundred and fifty dollars. That's for your system. Okay, awesome. Because I, I called another agent and I actually, even though I got the smaller end of the split, I still had to split my, I still had to stay on my commission plan with the office as well. So that's actually great. Yeah. Okay. And so um, as far as marketing or having my own MLS, when I get ready to close, my mom wants to buy a house. So when I get ready to close my mom's house, does that go under me or does that go under the team? Unfortunately, no. It goes under my team um, because I provided you with all the materials and set you up for success. It does fall under me. If you do decide to leave my team, you will have to start over. You cannot take any of my calls. You will have to sign an NDA saying that you will not use any of my people. You will not use any of the things that I've um you know, any marketing things that I've given you, you will not use. Okay. And so that NDA, um, does that mean that I cannot go to another team in the office as well as another team in the city? You can not go to another. Well, you, you can technically, you would have to get my permission um, and you would have to get my blessing to go to another team and you will have to interview with another team. But I is not suggested. Um, obviously, you're a person, you can do what you want, but I do require at least a minimum of five year commitment from you. You won't regret it. Okay. Um, so, it, how do we handle um, our separation? So, let's say that I'm not meeting my goals. Do we have a conversation together, or is it just I can't meet them and you let me go? So, I get two tries. First try, we, if I see that you need help, I'll sit down with you or I have someone sit down with you. We'll go over how to better you. And then the second time it's a warning. And then the third time, um, unfortunately we have to make an executive decision and have you no longer on the team. Okay. So my last question would be, uh, is there a way for me to uh, rise in the team? Will I ever uh, get to a higher position? Um, that's a really good question. Um, yes, but you have to show me first. You have to show me, you have to prove to me um, the skills you possess. I have to see something in you and I have to elect you. There's room for growth. Definitely. There's absolutely room for growth on the team. Um, and if you do really great, we, I can reconsider your commission structure. Absolutely. That's one of the reasons why my team is so big is because if I see someone outperforming everyone else, 
I'm going to have a sit down with them and I'm going to suggest, hey, let me add a little bit more to your commission structure or let's renegotiate your commission structure. That's absolutely on the table because I want to see you eat just like I eat. Very good. Okay. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm going to make a few more phone calls. And if I uh, feel like this is the best position for me, I will give you a call back. Does that sound like a plan? Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, Passion, you done an interview with a couple of teams, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just two. Great job, Passion. Thank you. Just <laughs> two people. That's it. Okay. So she did a really, really great job of saying and sticking to her goals. So one thing, one characteristic about a team leader is they never waver. They know the process works. They know the structure works. And you have to buy in. They're looking for the buy-in. So they're not going to change their rules because they're looking for someone. They're willing to do the work until they find the right person on their team because the most important part for us is to grow. Does that make sense? Who has some questions about the role play that we just did? It was really good. I do not have any questions. Okay. So questions, concerns about the team prospect period. Does anyone have any questions about that process? I just want to say this was very informative. Great job with the role play. Um, and thank you both, um, Coach Jay and Passion, for um, all the information y'all provided because um, so often people don't realize how much it goes into a team. Um, when you look at, for me, when I look at a team, I look at a team as us, like the Rockets is the team, it's no I and team. And either you want to be individual or you want to be the champions as a team all together. So kudos either way you go. And I look forward to seeing everyone at the top. All right. So uh, one last thing I want to um, go over before. Does anyone else have any questions first? Because uh, it's not, I'm not rushing you guys. It's 915 and I have a flat, so I have time to talk. <laughs> but do you guys have any questions before I go over this last thing about the team either being on a team or actually developing a team okay great so now that i have this idea and i want to start a team i want to give you the insight of what each leg of this team is supposed to do so that you will know and you can ask me further questions about this if this is something that you're really interested in doing because i'm actually running through this process but um, if you really want to structure a team, this is what a person's supposed to do. So the rainmaker is supposed to have a lead generation strategy. They're the person who does the hiring, the firing, and the managing. They also do the training, the coaching, and the consulting. And they do a weekly accountability and strategy call with everyone on the team. So everyone's going to get together. They're going to strategize because the goals are never uh, changed. They're adjusted. So we adjust the activity. We never adjust the goal, right? When you hire a lead listing specialist, this is the person who secures all of your listing appointments. They actually go out and get the listings and they do weekly seller calls. So they call all of the sellers. If you notice, I tell you guys when you're forming to make sure you do calls to the sellers in the neighborhood. So that's who does that. That's your lead listing specialist. And then they negotiate your listing offers. That's what a lead listing specialist does. Your lead buyer specialist is the person who secure all your buyer appointments. So those are the people, like she said, who are calling Zillow, who are calling Zerpel, who are um, getting leads from Realtor.com or just cold calling. Um, they go on the buyer appointments and they get the buyer representation agreement signs. They're the ones who actually show and actually sell the house. And then they make the weekly buyer calls and they negotiate all the buyer offers. Now, the lead coordinator, this is the person who handles the leads and they distribute the leads. They receive them, they sort them out, and they assign them to the people on the team. They're also the person who puts the leads in the database. And they're also the person who tracks the leads. So if I had a team and I hired a lead coordinator, I am going to track all of the first thing I'm going to do when I get a lead is I'm going to uh, note it, make sure it's in the database. Then I'm going to sort it out and send it to the best person that I feel fits the characteristic to do this, right? And then I'm going to make sure that lead is in the database. And then I'm going to put it on my tracking system because I'm going to go back. If I gave that lead to Shannon, I'm going to go to Shannon in 48 hours and I'm going to say, hey, I need a, I need a uh, cap, recap on what's going on with this lead. 
So that's the lead coordinator's job. Now, the marketing and the admin, their job is to make sure that the system is in order. So most Rainmakers have at least five systems and the lead generation system and the tracking system is managed by the administrator, the administrative assistant. They also handle all communications, they handle the finances and they oversee the staff. Who's on the staff? The listing manager, the transaction coordinator, and the assistant. That's what the admin manager does. Now, who's your telemarketer? Your telemarketer are the people who you call ISAs. They go get, they make phone calls and they get leads, right? Now, what does the listing manager do? So you had a lead listing specialist and then you have a listing manager. They're the person who runs the CMAs. The person who is the lead listing manager, the reason why they run the CMAs is because we know that they're good in numbers. And we have to have one source doing everything. If you have everybody on your team doing a multiple amount of things, when a problem happens, you cannot pinpoint who problem it was. So if I have one person running all the CMAs and doing all the listing marketing and doing all of the seller admin, then I know when the bad CMA went out, I can go say, you know what, Shannon did it, right? A transaction coordinator does the contract from contract to close. So you notice that the buyer's agents write the contracts and the listing agents negotiate the contracts. So the transaction coordinator does not get the contract until it's actually executed. And then it goes to closing. And they also select and manage all of the vendors for the uh, team. And they handle any client communication. So if a text is supposed to go out to the clients about a client appreciation party, that's what the transaction coordinator does. If there's a vendor opportunity, that's what the transaction coordinator does. If it's a field trip, that's what the transaction coordinator does. Now the assistant does this, answer the phone and they do all of the administrative, the emails, the paperwork, those kind of things. And then most teams, when they're big and they're doing big numbers, they have a runner. Those are people who put on lock boxes, they do carriers, they uh, go get checks, they drop off the earnest money. A runner does those type of things. So I hope this helped you. This, is re this right here is recorded. So if you have to go back and listen to it, or if you want to have a sit down with me about this, please give me a phone call because this is how a team is structured. Let me give you one piece of advice. If you far, uh, the tear away from the structure, your business will go up and down. Follow the structure, don't reinvent the wheel, just readjust your mindset. So I hope this really, really helped you guys. If you're decide, thinking about getting on a team, make sure this structure exists before you get on the team because you're gonna be setting yourself up for failure if they're not structured correctly. If you're thinking about structuring a team, the perfect time to structure it is when the thought exists, not in the middle when everything is crumbling down. So start your foundation today. Any questions? Man, let me tell y'all something. I done been on several broker teams and I've been working with several brokers throughout Houston. No other broker is gonna give you game like this. Y'all definitely need to come in, Coach Jay. Um, these calls are phenomenal. They fuel me every morning of my day. I just want to honestly thank you, um, Janelle, for keep pouring into um, the office as well as Clubhouse, the people that are not even in our office, you're pouring into their business. You are a blessing to us, and I just pray that God continue to bless you and your business. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. You know, the best way to bless me is to, one, bring me tacos, so if you know how to get to me. <laughs> You can bring me tacos. <laughs> and the second way is to go out and perform. No, for real. If you guys go out and take this information, do not sit on this information because it takes, it took me years to learn this stuff. And I want to see everybody grow, right? I truly believe that what I do is a blessing and it's a gift and the money I make is a byproduct. But the best way is for you to put it in play. I like to see you guys succeed. It's not about the accolades. It's definitely about seeing someone grow because I, I uh, a lot of you guys I told this to and a lot of you I haven't but when I got in real estate nobody helped me and I promised I would not be put nobody that was crossed my path in that same position and that's why I pour into you guys so much 
because nobody taught me this, guys. I learned all of this the hard way. And so I want you guys to skip those steps. If you structure your business the way I ask you to or tell you to, I promise it works. I promise it does. So if uh, you have any other questions, if I need to break it down any more, I promise you I'm going to get you in the right direction. Just follow the path. Thank you, Janelle. You hit it on point, everything. <laughs> yeah, And so Cheryl has worked on a team, right? Yes. Um, and a lot of you, have passion is interview with them. Like the team, the reason why teams grow and the reason why teams kill it is because they have to have this in place first. And so if you've ever been on a team and you didn't understand why the person did what they did, now you know, it's, it's got to work this way. So they wasn't necessarily being mean. They were just getting themselves in a position to work on their business instead of working in their business. But you have the highest responsibility as a team leader because you got to go get the money. You're always lead generating, but you're not working in your business. So I hope you guys have a really productive day. And then next week we'll have um, our calls again on Clubhouse from 830 to 930. If you want to have a uh, sit down conversation with me, not you can do it in person or you can click on the link um, on my Instagram page at I am Janelle Compton for a 30 minute consultation. You can go to my website at Janelle at PBCAacademy.com to schedule an appointment with me. Or you can shoot me an email at Janelle at CREliterealty.com. I really, really want you guys to prosper. I hope to see some really great stories and uh, testimonials about how great your business is. And thank you each and everyone who's at my brokerage that allows me to fuel them and do business with me. Uh, like Shannon said, we are relaunching. We're taking the, everyone that goes with us to the highest level possible in the city of Houston. So if you know another real estate agent that could take advantage of this, please invite them out to the relaunch. They, they definitely will not be it will be the best decision they can make. So any questions, concerns before we break? Nope. Okay. I, was this helpful for you guys? Very, very helpful. Definitely. Very. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, very good. So the, for the ones that are smiling and dialing, uh, please head on to the office. Let's get on the phone calls. Let's do what people do. People grow teams and make money. I, I gave you guys some team names. Google them. I also want to send some shouts out. Last night I Googled um, real estate agents in Houston and uh, I saw three of our agents. That's So we got to get our online presence together. So you need to start uh, investing in your SEO. But I saw I need, I need help with that. I need help with that. <laughs> no problem. I got you. So I, I saw Kamisha. I saw um, Shauna Connor and I saw Giselle. Um, so they actually have online presence. The rest of us really, really need to work on getting ourselves online because I want you to ask yourself this question. How easy is it to get in business with me? So if a person was coming here to move here and they Google real estate agents in the city of Houston and your name does not come up, it's a problem. Now, the ones that I did name need to work on getting themselves higher to the top. But at least you're online, so I congratulate you. Good job. All right. I hope you guys have a productive day. If you guys don't have anything else, we're going to be smiling and dialing. Uh, I'm going to thoroughly go over the rest of the contract today. If you're on this call and you're not part of our office, you're in the state of Texas, you're more than uh, Shannon will put the link to our Zoom in for today so that you guys can log on. I think we stopped on like page four. We're actually gonna go into the backup contract and we're gonna go into the third party financing addendums and the most common used addendums that you have. So today's gonna be super productive. We do have a vendor for lunch and learn. So come and hang out with us today. All right, guys, you have a great day. Thank you, Janelle. You're welcome. See y'all later. Bye-bye. Hope you got the person to fix your tire. <laughs>